All right, guys, good morning. The next big event of this week is up today. It's the ECB monetary policy meeting. Not much is likely to happen with interest rates. Instead, the focus is going to be on QE and the bond market. Now, as we've seen across the Atlantic in the US, bond yields have been rising recently. And this has largely been put down to an expectation of stronger economic growth and more inflation. So the situation has actually also spilled over into the Eurozone. However, economic growth in the Eurozone isn't expected to be on the same level as it is in the US. So those rising yields may be unjustified. So to tackle this sharp rise in yields, the ECB could use their PEP. That's the Pandemic Emergency Purchase Program that was set up last year. And if we look at Monday's data, we can see that there was a minor increase in net purchases last week, but it was pretty much in line with the previous week, which means that for two weeks in a row now, they've been slowing down the growth in their bond holdings. Now, the ECB has explained that this is down to the large amount of redemptions on maturing debt, which therefore pushes down their net purchases and slows down the increase on the bank's balance sheet. But that might not be really a good enough reason because the PEP has 1 trillion euros in untapped funds and current purchases are still well below where they were at the beginning of the pandemic. So if they knew that redemptions are going to be holding back their net purchases, then why not increase PEP purchases? It could be that it's down to the big divide in the ECB between the dovish and the hawkish members. Otherwise, if yields are rising more than you want them to be, you would surely be looking towards looser monetary policy. So these questions may be answered in the upcoming policy meeting and press conference today with Christine Lagarde, the head of the ECB. And you know what? Hopefully she can offer something more informative than the Federal Reserve's Jerome Powell, who's been pretty tight-lipped about the Fed's response recently, I must say. There is some expectation that purchases will be increased and extended beyond March 2022. However, this may not mean much for the markets if the central bank is going to be flip-flopping on policy decisions. You know, they've already said that the PEP program will be used to maintain favourable financial conditions. So if financial conditions aren't favourable and they still aren't using the PEP as much as they could, it may mean that markets start to lose confidence in them and that's not a good sign. And looking even further forward, it looks like the bank might even end up without many other options because for Eurozone governments to hit spending pledges this year, it means they need to issue more than a trillion euros in debt. So what we're mainly looking for is how much tolerance will be given to the higher borrowing costs and whether bond purchases will be increased or even if a more formal type of yield curve control is on the table. So far, the PEP has been the more favourable option since it can be adjusted based on market conditions, whereas a more formal type of yield curve control would mean purchasing unlimited quantities of bonds to maintain certain yield levels. So we expect that they'll continue with the PEP programme for now, but it's becoming more and more likely that they'll begin to increase their weekly purchases. Having said that, the pendulum seems to swing from one side to the other almost on a weekly basis at the moment. So who knows what next month will bring and what sort of other factors will need to be kept in mind or what decisions will be need to, needing to be made. It's all part of the fun and games of the markets and economics. So stay tuned. We'll keep you up to date on what's happening and I hope you have a good day. Leave a like if you found this one helpful and leave a comment letting me know what markets you're focusing on and what you'd like us to focus on in the next videos. Take care guys. Thanks for watching.